Now, if a studio makes Dora the Explorer or Blue's Clues into an RPG next year and it takes place in a brothel, yeah, we got a little bit of a problem. But Baldur's Gate, come on, dude. It's that time of the year again to go over some one-star Baldur's Gate 3 reviews and see if there's any validity behind some of these claims or if people have just lost their damn minds. Now, many times one-star reviews can actually be just as kooky as some of the reviewers out there who give a game a perfect score and can't handle any criticism against a game that they love, but the perfect reviews aren't nearly as fun to analyze. Now, if you're wondering what angle I'm coming into this video from, Baldur's Gate 3 is easily one of my favorite games of all time. But with that said, the game is not perfect, especially in its current state. So if I were to have to rate this game on a scale, in any sort of objective manner, I know a lot of this is subjective, there's no world where I could give this game a perfect score, even if it is one of my favorite games. But first, this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com! Yeah. The global men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the beard market. So if you're like me, you probably used to have some bulky beard trimmer with dull blades, a million useless attachments, and a power cord that always gets in the way. Well, I'm excited to be one of the first to take a look at the Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped. Now, the star of the show here is obviously the Beard Hedger Trimmer itself, which has a powerful 7200 RPM motor and a titanium coated T-blade which can cut through the thickest of hair in a single stroke. Now this trimmer only has one guard and this guard provides 20 different hair lengths so it's really all that you need and it works great for both the five o'clock shadow look or a beautiful lion's mane and let's not forget that it's also waterproof cordless and rechargeable. You can quite literally trim in the shower. Now the Beard Hedger Pro Kit also includes shampoo, conditioner, oil, beard bulk, a travel case, and a free gift. You have everything you need here to trim, cleanse, nourish, and style your beard. To start your legendary beard journey, just go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off plus free shipping when you use promo code WOLFHEART. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code WOLFHEART. This is seriously a really high quality product that I will be continuing to use and also I'll be getting it as a gift for others. My dad tried taking this from me. Back to the video. All right, let's start off with a pretty interesting one. And this one's over on Google reviews because Google does do the star system so I can actually do one star reviews. I am gonna talk about a few of the Steam ones, but the Steam ones are thumbs up or thumbs down. So a lot of people with thumbs down reviews don't necessarily you know, rate the game this low but we'll still talk about a few of those. All right, character creation opens relatively quickly with genital selection. <laughs> Porn, nudity, sex, behihality in Dungeons & Dragons video games shows that the Church of the 80s wasn't all wrong about Dungeons & Dragons, which is something I never wanted to be able to say. This is funny because are we really are we really putting this back to D&D &D and the Church of the 80s? Like this is nothing to do really with Dungeons and Dragons. This is an overall societal thing or societal issue if you take issue with it. This isn't Dungeons and Dragons and Larian Studios with Baldur's Gate 3. This is the direction that society has always been going in for the past however many years, 30 or 20 years. I, I don't know the time frame. Any great features the game might have had are undermined by the agenda of making hardcore porn video games from previously popular series. I disagree with this statement because I did my entire run without getting into any of this hardcore porn. With that said, I actually do have a criticism of this game that romance is pushed too often and sometimes in situations where it kind of took me out of the RP or didn't really make as much sense to me. So I understand that. But saying that this is just a hardcore porn video game, I think is actually undermining what the game actually is. So I would turn this sentence on him and say that he's undermining what the game is by focusing only on the sexual romance, which is optional. Even softcore porn has lasting consequences on society, children, relationships, and worldviews. So endorsing this game furthers an agenda that I can't agree with, no matter how much I enjoyed the other Baldur's Gate games. You know what? If this guy has a firm stance on, you know, sex and how it's portrayed in the media and the general direction that society is going in in relation to this topic, I can actually respect that this player holds firm on their beliefs and anything that crosses that line they're not going to support. I think that's respect worthy. Now with that said, there's usually an extreme on both sides here and something tells me that this player might be on the one extreme side, which is probably just as kooky as the world that he is so adamantly against on the other side. This tends to happen. There's usually two extreme views and they're both just kooky land to be honest with you. Therefore, due to family unfriendliness, lasting consequences to society, psychological damage from porn, to a game series originally marketed to children, and the fact the success of this game means more and more of what I'm saying, I give this game one star. Now, if, I don't think Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 are marketed to children, specifically. They're teen games, and teen does include children, but marketed to children? I don't think I agree with that. 
and also those games are 20 years old so those children are no longer children those are full-blown adults some of them are in the nursing home now seriously and let's be honest there ain't no children looking for baldur's gate one and two in the 2020s or they are few and far between so i think this entire point about the original games being marketed to children is irrelevant even if it was true because all the children who played bg1 and 2 are adults now and there's no marketing campaign to get any more children into bg1 and 2 in the 2020s that's for sure so it literally doesn't even matter. Like it doesn't even matter. That's a thing of the past now. So now we're at BG3 20 years later with a nostalgic adult market. And also it's being marketed towards adults because it's mature, clearly mature. This game goes right up to the line of marketing porn to children due to its predecessors and history. That just, that just doesn't make any sense. Like the previous games are, they're, they're gone in the past. There's, it's, it's not a kid's thing. It's not a kid's thing. And even if it was, it's not a kid's thing anymore. That's for sure. Kids don't play Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. You'd have a better argument if he argued that this game is so entertaining and it's being put out on so many different platforms that kids are seeing it and wanting to play it. But basing this on predecessors and acting like BG1 and 2 is like creating a massive wave of children that are coming to play BG3 because of BG1 and 2. That's just silly. Had they named this game anything else, they might have better avoided that. For example, Magic the Gathering, D&D settings, and books for Baldur's Gate market to children of all ages. What, what are these books for Baldur's Gate that market to children? Please enlighten me. But this video game says it markets to only adults, but by its very nature, it markets to children. Dungeons and Dragons markets to a very large audience. So I think just because children are included in Dungeons and Dragons doesn't mean there can't be any mature Dungeons and Dragons products. I think it's really silly to say that. That's like saying adult cartoons can't exist because they're cartoons. Now, if a studio makes Dora the Explorer or Blue's Clues into an RPG next year and it takes place in a brothel, yeah, we got a little bit of a problem. But Baldur's Gate, come on, dude. Moving on to a Steam thumbs down review, so not necessarily a one star review, so to say. It's very clear that people have based their initial impressions of this game on the first two acts. This is kind of a Captain Obvious statement. That's what initial impressions are. With that said, I think I understand the point that this reviewer is trying to make, and that is when you're listening to people talk about this game or reading reviews, just keep in mind that a lot of players have not reached the second half of the game due to this game's massive size. So it is important to keep that in mind. As it is now, this is basically early access 2.0, only two finished acts, very underwhelming third one, and extremely disappointing endings. And I actually partially agree with this. I do feel like act three needed some more time in the oven and it still does so it did kind of feel like early access in act three with that said i'd be lying to you all if i didn't say that act three was my favorite act of the game some of my favorite locations some of the coolest quests i want to talk about it but i can't for spoiler reasons but while it was my favorite act i also acknowledge that there was a lot of things that need a lot more work it was my favorite act but also the worst act i loved and hated it at the same time. It's a weird dichotomy that we have going on here. It's ridiculous that Larian is hailed as some kind of savior of AAA gaming just because there are no microtransactions. The game is incomplete. I think it's just stupid to say this. Like, people that say this don't really understand. They're not held because they don't have microtransactions. That's just the headlines and the media because it gets people to click on it. And microtransactions is such a hot topic. Larian is hailed as the savior of AAA gaming because Act 1 alone is already worth your $60. There's AAA companies out there that are eight times the size of Larian that put out games that have less quality and content than Larian has just in Act 1 alone. So even if you didn't like Act 3, like Act 1 and 2, Act 1, in my opinion, is like worthy of being a $60 game, if you ask me. It doesn't excuse Act 3 being uh, needing more work, but Act 1 was a ton of content, and we get screwed all the time in this industry, and to see a company go way above and beyond just Act 1 and give us even more for $60 or $70 with no microtransactions in the game, that's an incredible thing. So I think they still deserve to be held as kind of a savior of AAA gaming, as long as they stay on top of these updates and make sure that Act 3 is in a state that it needs to be in for people to enjoy it. Worst game of 2023. Cringe, racist, and problematic. Harmful to not say how it promotes animal abuse, too. <laughs> what about the human abuse? You freaking kill... You kill other human beings moving on there's a bug where if a friend joins your game and leaves you are stuck with their character in your party with no way to get rid of them i don't want to play anymore until they fix this 
I don't think this is a bug. I think this is actually just how it works right now. And you know what? I really hate that that's how it works. And I really hope that Larian changes this. Because that really sucks, man. Especially if you're like really far into your campaign. You don't really fully understand how the multiplayer works. And a friend joins you and all of a sudden that empty soulless character is stuck in your game. And you can't replace them with a companion or something like that. Really hope that Larian changes that to where you can get rid of custom characters one star confusing is an understatement the great gameplay is overshadowed by political agendas there's some people out there that live breathe and shite political agendas everything that they do they see politics in it everything that they do they're looking for it to line up exactly with their political ideologies exactly and if even one little thing is off games racist games misogynistic games woke garbage i cannot play this garbage everybody needs to chill the hell out man okay in a 100 to 200 hour game for one run, you're never going to agree with every little thing that you see or experience. That's not how life works, okay? If you start losing your mind over everything, you just look crazy and it doesn't even help what you're trying to advocate for. You just look like a lunatic. Life ain't perfect, okay? It's never going to line up perfectly with everything that you believe in or agree with. Never. Sorry. Baldur's Gate 3 is not being overshadowed by a political agenda. There may be things here and there that you don't agree with, the way that they're written or handled, but overall, this is a gigantic epic quest with Nautiloid ships, Mind Flayers, Elves, and Gith Yankee running around and killing each other and things like that. This is not some game that's meant to be a gigantic political, social issue, movement, push. Just shut up, play the game. You know you're already playing it anyways. On to the next one. Not a bad game, but a bad sequel. If the game were called Divinity 3, I would rate it a 9. So basically, this one-star review isn't really that important because we're talking about the game itself and how good it is. And this player clearly thinks that it's a phenomenal game if they're giving it a 9, if it simply has a different name. If it was called D&D Original Sin, it would get a decent 8. Unfortunately, the game is called Baldur's Gate 3. I don't mind the turn-based combat system. My main criticism is that the game overall just doesn't feel like playing a BG game in the Forgotten Realms. And you know what? I agree with this. It doesn't feel like the 1998 or 2000 Baldur's Gate games really at all, but it still has some ties to those games. Maybe not as much as some would like. Still takes place in the general vicinity and there's a lot of really cool references and Easter eggs the further that you get in the game, enough to where I felt like it did the originals justice, enough to where I felt like if you're an original fan, you would be smiling your ass off when you see certain things or do certain quests or meet certain characters. There's no other company out there that I would have rather have taken the Baldur's Gate name than Larian Studios because there's no other company out there that would be willing to put as much time and resources into their game as Larian and to have that be part of the Baldur's Gate franchise, such an epic franchise in gaming history, I'm really happy even though it does stray from the originals in terms of the overall feel of the game itself. So I totally understand this viewpoint and I actually understand those that are really angry that the game is turn-based and not real-time with pause because when you change an original series like that so much, of course that's gonna anger original fans, especially if they don't like turn-based. With that said, I think most of the design decisions that Larian made here were good design decisions and have propelled this game to headlines. A CRPG with the Baldur's Gate name is in gaming headlines. Everybody's talking about it. Makes me so proud of Baldur's Gate as a name overall. So I'm very happy with how it played out, but I also understand how it does feel different from the originals. Sadly, the developers have also failed in creating iconic companions. Totally disagree, but that's subjective. All companions I've met so far are so unlikable that I prefer to wander the Sword Coast, which by the way, looks like we're in California alone. Besides, the NPCs are so exaggerated that you feel like you're playing a level 12 party that has been level drained back to level one. It's kind of, it's actually partially true because some of the companions used to be quite powerful and then things happened that brought them back down to level one. So I can understand that. Appearance, history, ambitions, and abilities just don't match. I don't know. I think the, uh, the companions are phenomenal. I don't necessarily love every single one of them, but the deeper that I get into them, the more that I like the way that they're written. And as someone who's experienced their later on parts of their quest, may, not all of them, some of you guys are going to point out one companion. I know that. They have so much to their story, so much emotion. Some of the most intense emotions that I've ever felt in a video game have been with these companions. 
and doing parts of their quests. So I guess I just disagree. I like the companions and I can't wait to try some of them as origin characters. In addition, there are numerous design decisions that dilute the D&D system for no reason, for example, in character creation. Now he doesn't elaborate on this, so it's hard to say, but I'm assuming in character creation, it's probably the lack of like face choices and also body type customization. And I would love for there to be more face choices and also body customization, but also you gotta keep in mind that this isn't for no reason. Due to this game's insane cinematic nature, there had to be limitations. Now, a lot of us would want Larian to do more, I agree, but it's not for no reason, which is why I don't like the way that this is worded here. A lot of people, I'll see them compare the character creator in Baldur's Gate 3 to games like Cyberpunk or even Elden Ring, etc. Those games, their cinematic nature is totally different from Baldur's Gate 3. When you create a character in Baldur's Gate 3, you see that character in most of the cinematics in the game. All of the facial structures, everything, the lips, the eye, everything is animated for that character. When you play Elden Ring, it's not really the case. Your character's really far out. There's not really a ton of cinematics. When you play Cyberpunk, all those cinematics are in the first person view. So CDPR can give you 7 billion options for character creation. They don't have to animate any of it. So it's not for no reason. That said, I do wish we had more face choices because face style and structure etc is probably one of the most important things about a character creator and if you can't get the face right the whole character can kind of suck to you and you just won't be able to create the character that you want so i understand i think the overall character creator was pretty good just lacking in a couple key areas it's just not for no reason you have to understand what larian did here with cinematics it's pretty incredible there's so many game sequels out there that at least somehow attempt to capture the flair of their Predecessors, Sudden Strike 4, Fallout 3 and 4, and recently Jagged Alliance 3 have been able to reproduce the feel of their prequels. In BG3, you get the feeling that the designers hardly cared about the originals. I don't think that that's the case, and I would actually argue that Baldur's Gate 3 improved upon the originals in several aspects. Cinematics, player agency, permutations, things of that nature are an upgrade from the originals, but I also understand that the game overall doesn't feel like the originals but is it supposed to feel like the originals when the originals were from 98 and 2000 i don't know that's an interesting topic to discuss another question to think about too is if you like the overall quality of baldur's gate 3 and the above and beyond nature of the cinematics the permutations etc if larian wants to create a game of that caliber they can't make a niche CRPG. They have to make design decisions that will appeal to a larger audience. And a lot of times that can be a bad thing when a company tries to appeal to too many people because then the product just becomes okay and nobody really loves it. Somehow Larian pulled off an incredible feat and made a product that appeals to a really large audience and most people seem to like it. Hardcore CRPG fans and new players alike so if you're going to make a game of that caliber you can't always just do something that an old game did in the past when you're in a modern market you have to change things now they could have done something much more similar to the originals but i'm thinking the game would have had like 10 percent of the resources that Baldur's gate 3 currently has and maybe that would have made some original fans happier personally I am so excited that the Baldur's Gate name has been propelled into the stratosphere in the way that it has. I think it's so cool. All in all, Baldur's Gate 3 feels like the little brother that tries to outrank its older siblings with cocky behavior and fails in direct comparison. Obviously, he's saying this subjectively. Objectively, it does outrank its older siblings if you're looking at overall game popularity and sales and things of that nature. So it doesn't try to outrank its older siblings. It does... But then if you look at it from a personal standpoint, you might not feel that way, which I think is valid. And then we have a one-star review from Chris Pine himself. Purchased for my son because the YouTube reviews caught his attention. Within hours, he was quite unhappy, stating that it's just a tabletop game masked as a high-end video game. He found it lacking in playability and just outright boring. Terrible game. Why are you calling it a terrible game? You didn't play it yourself. You bought it for your son. Your son probably hates games like this, probably hates turn based games. And you bought it just because he was excited about a YouTube review, which is actually kind of cool of you. But to write a review after and call it terrible yourself is just, it's just weird. Why would you write a review? Either let your son write a review or don't write anything at all. You clearly bought him a game that he doesn't like. If you bought your son a pool, 
and he jumped in the pool one time and decided that he doesn't like swimming, would you say terrible pool? Maybe you would. I don't know. This is just a weird review. Five people found this helpful too. What? Who? Five people found this helpful? Who? I'm... I, we don't even have any details on his son, like age range or the types of games that he likes. And five people read this and they're like, oh yeah, my son's not going to like that. Or I'm not going to like it because Chris Pine's son over here thought it was boring. What is, I'm just, okay, moving on. And this will be the last one for this video. If you guys enjoy videos like this, let me know. Cause I can definitely make some more in the future. Feels like a college dating sim, not an RPG. Every character has an upper middle class San Francisco beach party vibe. There might be some truth behind that. Well, let me think about it. I'm trying to picture a Starion, Shadow, Gale, Will. Being upper middle class, chilling on a San Francisco beach. I can see that. I can actually see that. But I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Now, it feels like a college dating sim, not an RPG. I can actually sympathize with this statement because one of my main criticisms, and I touched on this a little bit in the first comment of this video, but I feel like the approval ratings are tied too closely to romance in this game, and there's not enough ways that a player can establish boundaries, and that friendship versus romantic partner is too much of a blur for a lot of players. And a lot of us ended up choosing things that we thought were friendship options that turned into more romantic-esque situations. I'm not talking about full-on, you know, sexual encounters and things like that, because I was able to avoid all of that. But I think that there should be some more boundaries that you're able to establish, because if I were to play again, I would just feel like every time I get an approval, it's leading towards romance with a character. I don't think that's really the best design, personally. So that's going to be it for this video i hope you all enjoyed there was some interesting comments that's for sure a lot of the one stars you can just throw out the window because just like i said with people that will rate a game 100 out of 100 people that rate the game one out of 100 especially with a game like baldur's gate 3 which clearly has a lot of good things about it even if you don't like it yourself they're just not really comments to take that seriously it's not really critical thinking for the most part but i'll catch you all on the next one